What we're going to do now is we're going to plant some of the seeds. Uh, radishes are something that come up very quickly. And again, I just get the end of my rake and just kind of make a little trench. And we open it up and I always put a crease in the middle of the package like that. There's our seeds. And then basically I just tap it and you can see them falling into the trench. You can notice I did not put a lot of seeds in there. Um, not every one will germinate in, uh, in all likelihood. And I'm only going halfway because I don't need 400 radishes in a three week period. So I'm going to save the rest of my radishes. I'm just going to take them back in the house and go store them in a cool, dry place. And I'll be able to do one or two more sowings. And then the other thing I'm going to do in the same row is Swiss chard. Swiss chard again, just like spinach. Um, uh, prefers a little bit cooler weather likes about a half inch depth planting and i'll have no problem telling this stuff apart when it comes up because they look distinctively different so now these are going to plant a little bit thicker because the likelihood is i won't do another swiss chard i find that they're a little harder to germinate than the radishes all right so what i'm going to do now is I'm just going to get my fingers, I'm only going to put a little bit of dirt over top. All right, so not even a half inch of soil. And slightly with my hand, press it down a bit. And the radish is the same thing. Just, just use my fingers. Now, if somebody's doing this in the ground, as opposed to in a raised garden, then you're just going to use a, a garden rake and just lightly rake it down. Then often what we'll do is we'll make a little spot. If we're done the package, I'll just bury the package. Nothing better than fresh snow peas out of the garden. And again, you like to harvest them when the weather is still cool. Uh, so again here, I'm just going to work this garden, loosen it up just a little bit. There's different varieties of peas. There's shorter ones. There's really tall varieties. The tall varieties are going to require a trellis or a string, something to hold them up. I prefer the shorter varieties and the snap peas, sugar snap peas or whatever in the spring. Uh, quick crop, uh, once they start flowering, they'll pod and flower for about three, four weeks and then the crop is finished. You'll be ripping them out of the soil after that and then you can put another crop in yet. So the peas can go down probably about an inch it's a fairly good sized seed and in a garden like this I can only put two rows in because if I put uh, something in the middle the peas are gonna overpower the plants the advantage too of having soil that's uh, very higher in organic matter watering is probably half of what you would have to do in a regular garden because all this peat moss and compost really holds moisture and anything that holds moisture also holds nutrients. So if you had a real sandy soil, a lot of rain, a lot of your nutrients are going to wash down, way down to the point where the plants can't get it anymore. Um, but if you have organic matter, it absorbs it like a sponge and hangs on to the water and the nutrients, and your plants do much better. So I've got two packages of snow peas here called Oregon Sugar Pod 2. And they're the ones that are really sweet, but you don't let the peas pod or the, you don't let the pods on the plants enlarge to the point where the peas are large because then they get too woody already you want to as soon as the pod is long enough and it's still relatively flat that's when you pick them and i'm going to plant these about two inches apart and with any seed you're never going to get 100 percent germination once the seed has moisture around it you need steady moisture i don't mean water it every day because you'll drown it but um, as soon as the surface of the ground turns dry, a light watering every couple days to keep the seeds moist, um, then the seeds will sense that there's moisture around the plant all the time, and then they'll germinate very quickly. If it gets a little bit dry in between, the seed shuts down again, and sometimes it'll resprout again if the moisture content is good. If not, it goes dormant again. I'll get a garden hose and a little spray nozzle, and... I'll just slowly go over the row once, 
come back once that's sufficient again to keep the moisture down it's nice and moist down here right now the seeds would probably half sprout just with the moisture that's in the ground if i got one or two rains this week i wouldn't even have to bother so what i'll do is once my plants are about this big just before they start to run i put a tomato cage in the ground and i put them almost beside each other touching and the peas will all wind their cells, uh, themselves through the tomato cage. And then when it's done, I pull the whole cage out, shake all the stuff off, and I'll use it for something else. That way, if you put stakes in, you put string in, you get a big windy day or something like that, sometimes it all blows over. So a good heavy-duty tomato cage. You get to use it for 5, 10 years. This one I put a little bit more soil on than I would have on a real fine seed because it's a bigger... You know, if the package doesn't tell you the depth, usually it will on the back of the package, but if it doesn't say how deep the plant it, generally you want to go at least two to three times the thickness of the seed. And a carrot, if you let them dry out a little bit on top, they're done for because there's not enough uh, nutrient in that seed in order for it to half sprout, shut down, and then go again. So once it sprouts a little bit, you want to keep it going. Mm -hmm.